virtue, we are about to start evangelism meetings next Saturday evening. Next Saturday evening. And if, you want, and if you would like invitations to give to your friends, to your neighbors, come today at 4 o'clock and the chapel will be distributing invitations. And even if you want to join us at 4 o'clock this afternoon, we'll, a group, whoever is welcome, everyone is welcome to come. Whoever wants to come as we distribute the neighborhoods of here in Cleburne. And so you'll be given a map on which area uh, we would like for you to cover. But most of all, the best way to invite someone is word of mouth. Go to your neighbor, go to your friend, and say, hey, there's some powerful meetings you need to come. Would you be my special guest? So you come and you bring your friend and your guest uh, with you. Amen? Amen? Now, this here on the screen is our theme song. Our theme song, Jesus is Coming Again. Not the traditional hymn that we know from our hymn, hymnal, but some of us may know it. And friends, Jesus is coming again. Amen. That's why we're having these meetings. Not because we have nothing else to do. We have plenty of things to do. But the most important thing is to prepare the world, prepare our neighbors, because Jesus is coming again. So I want us, before we begin and open our message today, I want us to all sing this hymn, this song. And this is not a special from Pastor Charles. So if you know it, please join me in singing. It's a happy hymn, it's a happy song. Let me make sure that this one here goes.
already were. But we know that greater is He that is within us. Greater is our you, O Lord. Bless as we open your word this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading was found in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Therefore, first out the old leaven, that you may be a new lump. That you may be a new lump. Today's message is, message is a new lump. And the devil hates, the devil hates communion service. He hates the fact that a whole congregation walks out of church clean, forgiven, under the blood of Christ. Friends, he hates it so much that if after today's service we partake in the foot washing and communion with a sincere heart, if a bomb were to blow up and land in our church, all of us would be saved. Communion service is a time where we recommit our vows to God. God cleanses our hearts. And the devil hates that. And that's why he tries to discourage people not to come to communion. Because he knows that when you walk out, you are walked out a clean son and daughter of God. So here in 1 Corinthians 5, 7, Purge out the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, since you truly are unleavened. For indeed Christ, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. You've been purged, so we are unleavened. And leaven represents in the Bible sin. We know that in the, in, the, in the next verse where it says, Not with old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Leaven represents sin, and since Christ, is, Christ the Passover was sacrificed for us, then we are unleavened. And we have studied the, we have studied already the feast days and what they represent and how they all point to Jesus and how they all are fulfilled in Jesus. And Paul understood this, and he brings it out right here in 1 Corinthians, talking about the unleavened bread and how Christ is our Passover. I like to read the same verse from two other translations. From the New Living Translation it says, Get rid of the old yeast by removing this wicked person from among you. Then you will be like a fresh batch of dough made without yeast, which is what you really are. And the good, the good news translation says, You must remove the old yeast of sin so that you will be entirely pure. Then you will be like a new batch of dough without any yeast, as indeed I know you actually are. Here, you see, when you first come to Christ, when you first come to Christ, and you have that relationship, that encounter, that aha uh -huh moment with Jesus, you are unleavened. God forgives you, purges you. But somewhere along the way, we pick up some yeast. Somewhere along the way, we pick up some lead, some sin. And this is why when we use unleavened bread, it has to be unleavened. Because it represents the body of Christ that had no sin. Had no sin. And it, it is to remind us that Christ, the sinless Lamb of God, died for you and for me. Communion is a chance to get back to God when you first found Him. Do you remember that time when you first found God? When you first found the truths that are in the Bible, the acceptance of God's grace, the acceptance that you are God's son, God's daughter, God's child, and how that made you feel. Communion is a time to get back to that first love that the Bible says. Yeah. When you first found him, he blotted out your past. But somehow along the way, you picked up a little bit of yeast, a little bit of love. And that's why God is inviting us today to 
partake of this bread with no yeast and no leaven. And Paul here tells us, purge out that leaven. you got to take it out. The only one who can take it out is Christ. Amen. He's the one who took it when you first met him. He's the one that took it out when you first met him. And as months, weeks pass, and you begin to accumulate, Jesus says, take it all out. Purge it out. Today is a day that you can start afresh with God. I invite you to open your Bibles to Exodus chapter 12. We're going to see just quickly on how the Israel celebrated the Passover. And we know that it was Passover when Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper. Replacing Passover with the Lord's Supper. So here in Exodus chapter 12, verse 3, the Passover is being instituted, and here it says, Speak to all the congregations of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. The Passover was a personal experience. Every man take for himself a lamb. And when John, the Baptist, sees Jesus there in John 1, 29, he said, Behold the Lamb of God, which what? Takes away the sin of the world. That Lamb. He knew, and others knew, that he was talking about that Passover Lamb. And that Lamb that he pointed to, Behold that Lamb that takes away the sin of the world. John is pointing out that that's the Lamb that every man and woman needs to take. There where it says, Take for yourself. A lamb. We need to take for ourselves Jesus. Personally, we can't assume that because my family believes in Jesus, we're all going to be in the same boat. It's a personal experience with Christ. Everyone has to have that personal experience. Notice verse 5 there in, in Exodus 12, in verse 5. It says, Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. A perfect lamb. It couldn't be one that was born deformed, or one that was sick, or one that really wasn't useful for you and say, well, let's give God that one. No, a perfect. Probably the most valuable lamb. If you sold lamb or sheep and you would save your best ones to go at high price, God says, I want that one. A perfect one. And Hebrews 4.15 tells us that Christ was perfect. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. Yet without sin. It's not a sin to be tempted. We are all tempted. Jesus was tempted. What do you do with the temptation? So then here, that lamb was perfect. No broken bones, no spots. It had to be perfect because it represented Jesus Christ, the perfect Lamb of God. And that is what frustrated the devil. That God came in the form of a man, and for 33 years, he could not get Christ to sin. Not even have a simple thought. So praise the Lord, because we are covered by that blood of that lamb. Praise the Lord, without blemish. And Christ and God only accepts Christ's perfection. You see, the lamb had to be perfect. Christ only accepts perfection. That's why you and I right now are in heaven, because we're not perfect yet. Christ accepts, God accepts only perfection. And that's why there in Exodus 12, verse 6 and 7. Now you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the doorpost and on the, lint, on the lintel of the house where they eat it. They had to put the blood over them. And if you are familiar with, with the 10th plague here in Egypt, the only reason why they did not die and they were protected it was because they were under the blood of the Lamb. Amen. That's the only reason. Not 
because there was anything good in Israel. Even Aaron had to be, even Moses had to be under the Lamb, under, under the blood of the Lamb, friends. Under the blood of the Lamb. And we too need to be under the blood of the Lamb. Hebrews 9.22 says, All things are purified with blood, and without shedding of blood there is no remission. He did not pass, the angel of death did not pass over Israel because they were nice. But he passed over them because they were covered by the blood of Christ. The only reason why God looks at us and accepts us is not because there, there is anything good in me. There is nothing good in me. I may be nice, but not good enough for heaven. But when I accept Christ's sacrifice and ask Him to fill my heart, I am covered with the blood of Christ. And the Father looks, and instead of seeing me, He says, His Son covers me. The Son in my heart. And He accepts His Son. And He accepts us. Not because there is anything good in ourselves. And notice in verse 8, not only were they under the blood, but they even had to eat and feed of the Lamb. Verse 8, it says, then they shall eat the flesh of them on that night, roasted in fire, with unleavened bread, and with bitter herb they shall eat it. Jesus, Jesus, in John 6, 53, says himself, Most assuredly I say to you, unless you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Unless you eat Jesus, you have no life. You have no life. Now, I know you are a smart group. You know I'm not talking about cannibalism. How is it that we eat Jesus? What is our nourishment? The Word of God. God's Word. God's Word is our nourishment. We need to eat of it every day. Every day. There is no nourishment without Christ. There is no nourishment without Christ. So, a simple question. Did you eat breakfast this morning? I'm talking about your oatmeal or your pancakes. Did you eat your breakfast this morning? To feed on the Word of God. Because we feed on the Word of God in verse 9, 10, and 11, I'm sorry, they're in Exodus 12. This Passover reading, they're in verse 10 and 11. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Okay, so there will be no leftovers. And what remains of it until morning you shall burn with fire. Why were they going to do that? Because they weren't going to be there the next morning. And thus you shall eat it with a belt on your waist, your sandal on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Sounds like they're getting ready to go somewhere. So you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. They were eating it in haste. In haste of what? Leaving Egypt and going where? To the promised land. There in 1 Corinthians 11, 26. We will, we will read this. And we come back to our footwalk. In 1 Corinthians 11, 26. It tells us. The Lord suffered. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Until he comes. We proclaim the Lord's death, not just today or tomorrow, but until He comes. We should be partaking in the Lord's Supper ready to go. Ready to go. We are, by the way, seven-day Adventists. Adventists, we waiting for Christ's second coming. We should not be comfortable here. This, this, there, there's a song that says, This world is not my home, I'm just as true. Just a pattern. If this world is your home, 
Pray to the Lord that He change your heart. That is why in 1 Corinthians 5 verse 7, God wants to purge out the leaven. Purge it all out. You may have a little bit, but He says, I want it all out. Amen. Even a little bit can still take you to destruction. Just look at verse 6 there in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6. In, in, in the context of chapter 5, here Paul is, is letting them know if whenever somebody re continues to want to do evil and they don't want to come to Christ, Paul says, you know what, let him go. Deliver him to Satan. Verse 5 says, Deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that his spirit may be saved in the day of, in the, day of the Lord Jesus. Your glory is not good. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? How much? A little leaven will leaven the whole lump. Now I don't know if you understand the vocabulary that the Bible is using here. I think when I was younger, I didn't understand leaven. What is that? Yeast? What's that? A lump? A lump of what? And here, for what do you use yeast? To bake, to bake. Have you seen, you know, the, the still in, in, in little packets. Sometimes they're packets of, of, of maybe four or five, and you just turn one off and put it in the mix. But you use a little bit for the big mix. A little bit. And that little bit is enough to what? To make it rise. Mm -hmm. To make it rise. You, you use it to bake. And here, Paul is telling them, you've got to purge out the leaven. Even a little bit, even one, will make the, the bread rise. Even a little leaven will leaven the whole lump. Even a little bit. Do we want to be a new lump? We cannot hold on to just a little sin. We can't. It'll mess up the, our whole being. Here Paul is telling us, even a little bit will mess you up. You have to purge it all out. Because you see, our sins not only killed Jesus, but they scarred him eternally forever. You realize that while you and I in heaven will have our perfect bodies and perfect minds, now doesn't the Bible say in 1 Corinthians 15, 53? It says, For this corruptible must put on incorruptible, and this mortal must put on immortality. I'm looking forward to that day. There will be no more aches, no more pains, no more wrinkles, super strength, super muscles. Perfect. But friends, while you and I are enjoying perfect bodies, Jesus will be the only being in the universe with, an in, with imperfection. Imperfect. You know how? He will have the scars on his hands and his feet and side. Those aren't going to go away. You see, your scars and my scars, when we get new bodies, they're going to be gone. They're going to be gone. But Christ's scars will remain for eternity. Isaiah 53 said that he was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities. He was permanently wounded and permanently bruised. Why? Because of our love, of our use, of our sin. How dare we take his sacrifice so lightly and sin so lightly? While you will be enjoying perfect bodies in heaven, Christ will have him. What kind of love is that? A love that we don't understand. But a love that we should appreciate and say, Lord, thank you. Help me to purge out this leaven with your spirit. Amen. Psalms 32. I invite you to turn 
Psalm 32, friends. How many of you, do any of you want any leaven left in you? Psalm 37. Before we dismiss to participate in our food water, Psalm 37. 32, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Psalm 32. Verse 1 and 2, it says, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man in whom the Lord does not impute iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Amen. Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. I'm sorry again, Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43, verse 25. I, even I, am he who blots out your transgression. For my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. Notice, for whose sake? For his own sake. He not just forgives you for your sake. Praise the Lord, because it's comforting for my sake that God forgives me. But here it says, for his sake. For his sake. My sins not only hurt me, but they hurt God. And when he cleanses and purges us, it is for his sake also. It is for his sake that we are forgiven and blotted out. Isaiah 44, verse 22. Right there, right there it says, I have blotted out, I have blotted out like a thick cloud your transgression, and like a cloud your sins. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. We do not want any eleven friends. We need to return to God. Return to Him. First John 1 9, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So I invite you to participate in the foot washing instituted by Jesus and the partaking of his forgiveness, cleansing, and becoming a new lump. And removing all that leaven, whether it's a little bit or a lot, removing it today, right here, as we partake in this. Let's pray. Father in heaven, you want us to remove any leaven, any sin from us. The only way that can happen is if we Confess to one another, confess to you our sins. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Because even a little bit of leaven will leaven the whole body. And when you come, you want us to be a new lot. We proclaim this until the day that you come. Because we know that you will not partake until you partake with us. We want to hurry this so we can partake of this with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. We will now be dismissed to participate in the foot washing, which will be in the Family Life Center. There is a section there for couples, married couples, for single men and single women as well.